What is good, everybody? I'm Max, a part-time pit master, and you're watching Part-Timers Barbecue. And on this episode, we're dealing with brisket pastrami. This is another first for me. So before we break into it, we gotta take it back to last Friday, seven days ago, when we got this bad boy trimmed up and brined. So let's do it. Okay, so it is brine time now. I have four cups of water in this pot on a low heat. We're gonna add one cup of salt. This is kosher salt. We're gonna add two tablespoons and three teaspoons of pink curing salt. Then I'm gonna go with one cup of white sugar and a half cup of brown sugar. We're gonna heat this up and keep mixing it till we dissolve all the sugars and salts. You wanna be careful with the pink curing salt. This isn't Himalaya salt, this is pink curing salt. You wanna be careful with your measurements on it. Um, but yeah, so once we get this all mixed in and mixed together and dissolved, we're gonna be adding the rest of the water, which is eight cups of cold water for a total of 12 cups. You're gonna be seeing that right about now perfect and then we're going to also add some seasonings in there as well now i wasn't 100 percent prepared for doing a pastrami so i didn't have whole coriander seed until it was obviously time for seasoning and i didn't have any mustard seed next time what i'll do is have those but i'll also toast the spices beforehand just to kind of open up the aromatics but here i'm just eyeballing some peppercorns whole peppercorns and some chili flakes and i threw about four five six cloves of whole cloves of garlic you can chop them up roughly if you want or crush them no big deal i don't think anyway regardless it turned out good so i'm not mad at it so I'm gonna mix these together. We're gonna to cool it down in the fridge before we place the meat inside the brine. Okay, so now our brine is nice and cool. We're gonna put this three pound brisket flat into the brine. Little pro tip, I'm gonna put a plate over top of it to hold it down stop it from floating because you want this completely submerged we're going to be doing this for seven days every couple of days i'm going to be flipping it uh just to make sure it gets an even brine distribution so yeah all right so as you saw we took care of the whole brining process and then what you didn't see is last night after i pulled it out of the brine i uh rinsed it off really well and then I let it sit and soak in some cold water for a few hours. That's going to help draw out any of the extra salts because it's going to be salty. It was in a brine for seven days so I want to do what I can and be cautious and I don't want to mess this up. This is my first time doing it so uh, yeah after I did that I let it, I wrapped it then this morning I uh, took it out of the wrap, let it sit in the fridge uncovered, let the air surround it, help develop a little bit of a pellicle on the skin. And I'm, now that leads us to now, we're gonna season it and throw it on the pit in the morning. But first, let me give you a look. Looks pretty good. The color, it's not red. So all the protein was drawn out in the brine. Let's season it up. <sighs> Loud. All right. What I forgot to mention is what we're gonna season this up with. First, I made my own homemade kind of pastrami seasoning. So basically ground coriander, black pepper, and garlic powder, but I also added some allspice to this and some chili flakes. The standard I believe is coriander, uh, black pepper, and garlic powder from what I've seen. So I added a little bit extra, but here's how it looks. It's nice and coarse. We're gonna use mustard as a binder. So let's get into it. So time to season it up. We got our plain yellow mustard here. And one thing I wanna note is there is no salt in this rub. It's been sitting in a salt brine for seven days. You don't need extra salt. So this is just what I already described. No salt at all.
right. So now you've seen all that, we went back in time, now we're back in the present time. Got a little mop sauce here. The only reason I'm doing a mop is because I had to throw out my spray bottle. It got dirty. <laughs> anyway, so with the mop though, what's awesome is you can add extra stuff. So this is just vinegar, water, uh, obviously some chili flakes, black pepper, and a little mustard, and some brown sugar. So add a little bit more flavor. Nothing wrong with that. Let's pop this open and take a look. Starting to get a nice color on it too, crust building up. Now we got fat cap down for the first half. Then I'm gonna flip it over, fat cap up most likely. But let's hit it with a little knock because she's starting to dry out. We're just dabbing it. Technique with the mop is just to dab. Because if you uh, go side to side, you could uh, knock off some seasoning most likely. So you just dab it. Get it nice and wet. Close it back up. And let it keep smoking. Okay, so we are coming up to hour five, or before hour five, like four and a half hour mark. I just mopped it. Um, so yeah, it's looking really good. I'm gonna go in there and we're gonna take a look at it again and I'm gonna flip it over, fat cap up. So I'm gonna get my uh, lining glove liner on, my other glove, and then we're gonna go in and take a look. So as you can see, we just got it wrapped. I did the foil boat method. I'm really liking that method. It allows that fat cap to continue rendering and crisp up a bit. I think it's perfect. Um, so I decided to go with that. Not really traditional, but I've never had traditional pastrami. So I don't know what traditional is just from what I've seen. But anyway, um, so I did this. Um, it's looking good. We're gonna keep it going. I'm running around 250. I think I'm gonna bump it up to 275. I like to do my cooks through stages, 225 off in the jump, and then 250, finish around 275. Um, yeah, it looks great. So uh, can't wait to dig in. Also, I'm using Lumberjack Competition Blend and Char Hickory Mix. Great mix, great flavor, but yeah, don't forget, like and subscribe. I appreciate all y'all. We are looking good. It's been uh, foil boated for probably like two hours. Just feel how we are done. It's gonna be not as loose as a brisket that's not cured. But we are definitely done. So I'm gonna be pulling this off now. So after a nice two, three hour rest, we are ready to slice into this brisket pastrami. I'm pumped and <laughs> it's hot. You see my fingers, I'm like, oh, but look at that crust. Great crust, great texture on it. And it's, uh, you're gonna see it's gonna be wiggly and jiggly.
remember when it comes to barbecue it is okay to play with your meat especially when it's wiggly and jiggly like this so i'm going to start we're going to cut from uh thin end there and we're going across the grain you're going to notice that this is super tender on this side but as i get to the thicker part of the flat the slices hold up like i say before i always aim to be too tender than not tender enough but yeah fat splitting perfectly I can't wait to see I can already see obviously when I'm cutting how nice and red this looks but I'm gonna show you guys wait till y'all see the brine the cure penetrated fully look at that I'm guessing that's what you want when out of a pastrami but now I'm gonna take a slice and get a nice little taste test see super tender I'm not worried about it though and my face is gonna say it all it tastes awesome. It's crazy to think that a brisket t can uh, taste like this. But what I will say is next time, I'm gonna soak it in water overnight because it was towing the line of being a little too salty. It wasn't, but it was towing that line. So next time, I'm definitely gonna soak it overnight. But look, here's a bigger, here's the thicker part. Slices hold up, but still pull apart with one hand. No problem. All in all, this was a great cook. I thank you guys for watching and supporting me. Till the next one, everybody. Keep that smoke alive.